Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So it's seven years ago today that the Affordable Care Act passed and changed the lives of so many millions of Americans who previously couldn't get health care. But I think we knew even at the time that a big bill like this, a transformative piece of legislation like this, um, over time would require uh, some changes, just as Social Security and Medicare have, have done. And, and the truth of the matter is, for seven years, as we heard Republicans complaining about what was happening, said, let's sit down together as members of Congress, representatives of the people, and fix what we've got and build on the things that have made it possible for all these millions of people to have not only health care, but, but better health care. And instead, what we heard over and over again is repeal Obamacare, repeal Obamacare. And I kind of feel like today what we have is because they said that, then they feel like they have to fulfill a promise. But if you look at what they're offering, it really hurts so many Americans. What I hope the American people will understand that the so-called repeal and replace bill raises the cost of premiums and out-of-pocket costs. People are going to pay more and get less. Um, 24 million people, that's just a start. It ends up being some 50 million people after some years, will lose their coverage altogether. And it represents the single largest transfer of wealth to the top richest Americans and corporations. We're talking about $600 billion in tax relief. Not a lot of talk about that. That in many ways, this is a tax cut for the richest being masked as a health care bill. And finally, I want to really focus in on what we call the age tax. Well before I was a senior citizen myself, I, I have worked with older Americans um, in the state of Illinois where, where I'm from and here in Congress as well. So what, what is this, uh, this age tax? This bill says that people who are between the age of 50, not very old, and 64, in other words pre-Medicare, will be allowed to be charged five times more than, than young people for their health care. Actually, it allows the states even to go more than five times more for their health care. It will lower the subsidies. And so, as, uh, as has been said many times, here's just an example. If you're 64 years old, with an income of around $26,500, which, by the way, is the median income for people that age, certainly not a wealthy person, would pay under this bill, the Republican bill, $14,600 for premiums. Think of that as compared to $1,700 today, an increase of $12,900. And so it's not surprising that the Congressional Budget Office predicts that many of those people will simply have to give up their health care. So the, this, is, this is a group, the reason they want to charge them more is to entice younger people who will then pay lower premiums to actually get on the, on the program. We're all for that. We want to make sure that young people get, out, get on. But people who are 50 to 64 are very likely or more likely than young people to have health care issues. So it's absolutely no wonder that so many organizations and forces are lining up in the United States to oppose this bill. The American Medical Association, the doctors, and all the different subgroups of doctors have written letters saying no to this repeal and replace. The American Hospital Association, not only urban hospitals and, and hospitals in medically underserved areas, rural hospitals could go under. We're talking, the AARP, 35 million members strong, is 
absolutely dead set. They're running ads. Some of you, uh, some people may have seen them on, on television against this legislation. The American Nurses Association, conservative think tanks are against it, and many members of Congress are against it, and for good reason. One of our uh, Republican senators said to House Republicans, don't walk the plank. And I would suggest they take that advice and vote no. I yield back. Gentlemen from